Limits, an Intuitive Approach, Part 4. We notice in this example that as uh, this total expression as uh, x goes to infinity, we end up with infinity minus infinity. That is, this first part of the expression goes to infinity minus this other part, which goes to infinity. That is, it go grows without bound as x grows without bound. So um, when we have a, something like this in an, an indeterminate form, um, in fact, this is one of our three indeterminate forms that we've been working with. One of them is 0 over 0, another is infinity over infinity, and the third one is infinity minus infinity, which we have. Uh, it's, uh, the, we look for a trick. That is, we try to change the form of this using algebra. And what comes to mind right away is this is really uh, uh, this expression over 1. And we can rationalize the numerator in that case. And that's what I do here. In other words, I put that expression over 1. And I multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate of the numerator. That will leave us with uh, x minus 1 minus 3x on top, and then this uh, conjugate on the bottom. And there we have it. And we're going to just simplify from now on. In other words, I'm going to simplify this. This will get down to negative 2x minus 1. And here's the uh, uh, radical plus the radical on the bottom. And I think it would be convenient to uh, factor out a negative and bring it outside the limit. And there it is. I brought it outside the limit. This is a little easier to look at. Now, when I uh, look at what happens to this expression as x gets b large without bound, then I find the top gets larger without bound, and I also find the bottom grows to infinity without bound, because now I have a plus here. Well, that doesn't help as much either, does it? We have another indeterminate form. So a nice trick to use when you have x going to infinity and you end up with infinity over infinity is to look at the power of the denominator, the highest power of the denominator of the highest power of x. And we see that that's the square root of x, or x to the 1 half. And I'm going to divide the top by x to the 1 half, or the square root of x, and the bottom by uh, x to the 1 half, or the square root of x, either way you want to say it. And that's what I do. And here it is. I'm going to be using uh, radical x and x to the 1 half interchangeably here. It's just that it's more convenient to use this on the top. Now, one thing I can do is I can split this into two fractions and split this into two fractions. And then I can start doing more algebraic simplification. But before I do that, remember this, that the limit of k over x to the n as x heads to infinity equals 0, where k is any constant and n is greater than 0. In other words, what this causes is this stays the same. The top stays constant, and the bottom grows without bound, so the expression heads to 0. We're going to use this um, in a minute after we finish simplifying the expression. Here we are, back at this expression again. And I think what we want to do is we can cancel out x's here and end up with, in other words, this is x to the 1, x to the 1 half. So I can subtract 1 half from 1 and end up with uh, the square root of x to the 1 half or the square root of x. Uh, I'll just change this to a radical notation. And the next thing on the bottom, I think I'll split that fraction up and reduce that. And uh, there it is. I'm getting it. Uh, I'm going to be able to reduce this down pretty well. This looks like it's going to go to 1, doesn't it? And um, I think that's going to happen in the next step. Now, as soon as we get to here, if I uh, take x and make it bit, uh, larger without bound, what happens is going to happen. This is going to go to 0. This is going to go to 0. Uh, this is going to be the square root of 1, which is 1 plus the square root of 3. So I'll end up with a constant on the bottom, and this is going to grow without bound or go to infinity. So I'll end up with infinity plus 0 over what? 1, really, plus the square root of 3. So the top of this um, fraction is growing without bound, which will send the whole expression to infinity. So my answer is negative infinity. And I want to go back and take a look at the original expression. Um, right here. And the limit, as x heads to infinity, of the square root of x plus 1 minus the square root of 3x is negative infinity. 